bring all the tithe into the storehouse that they may be food in my house and try me now on this says the lord of hosts if i will not open up you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it now family if we just have a look at this um, we all know god doesn't lie yeah, he says, if we don't give our tithes and offering, we are robbing him. We are stealing from him. That's what the word says. That's not what I say. And a lot of people have the, they confused by the enemy to think that to pay your car payment is more important than paying your tithes and offering. You know what, I'm going to be very blunt in saying this, and I'm not saying this because I want money in the church. I'm saying this because this might mean whether you go to heaven or not. Now everyone is staring with big eyes again. Who's got their phones here? So quickly go on 1 Corinthians 6 verse 8 to 10. And you've got the microphone there. So it's not coming out of my mouth. Just read them what's, what's said there. So Malachi 3.10 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. So if you steal from God, look what the word says. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren know that ye, not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, or themselves with mankind, nor thieves, Le nor no thieves, thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Let's just read it in a different version. Instead, you yourself cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers and sisters. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor idlers. So sexually immoral people, if you sleep around, guess what? God is saying you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Homosexuals. So men who have sex with men, and it, this is the words here. Men who have sex with men. Guess what? Get your life in order. Repent from your sin. Because the word says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Nor thieves. So if you steal, if you steal stationery from the book, or you walk into the shop and you steal one chapter, it doesn't matter. If you steal, you're a thief. If you steal God's time, and also, if you steal his tithes and offering that belongs to him, he says he gives you a salary. It's only by God's grace that we've got to work. He says all I want is 10%. And guess what? If you give me 10%, I will give you back so much more that you will not have room enough to receive it. Now, family, the tithes and offering messages um, that I share you on a Sunday, please believe me, it's not to, oh, it's still between you and God. You've got free choice, free will. <clears throat> but what I'm saying is, you can't not do the one, but on the other hand, you expect God to come through for you. It works like this. When we do what God tells us to do, 
He will come through for us. Amen. I'm not going to harbor too long on that. But I just want to make clear. So one day, when each and every person stands before God, they can't say, but I didn't know. Because Duncan, here on the 30th, 30th of April 2023, told you, this is what God expects from you. Father God, we just pray for the tithe and offering. We just believe that each and every saint will go where you need it the most, Father God. And I pray that you will open up the heavens upon each and every person here, Father God. That you will bless them, that each and every person here will become a financer in your kingdom, Father God. We pray it by the blood and by the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Now today I decided I'm not going to give a doom and gloom message. I'm not going to hit too hard on the knuckles. But this morning I just want to say there is hope. You know what, in everything that goes on in life, <clears throat> every situation that we go through, um, each and everything the enemy puts on our pathway, there is hope. Like I said, Nana, in the prayer as well, you know what, when our focus is on Christ, it's so much easier for us. Yes, the word is very clear. We are going to be tempted. Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the desert. We're not more special than him. We will also be tested. Things will also happen, our, happen in our lives that we must work through so that we can become stronger people, so that we can become better people. For example, you go mine for gold. <clears throat> Do you take a bar of gold out of the ground? No. It comes in a rock form. So that rock needs to be crushed. So that they can... The rocks this side, the gold dust or the gold nugget or the gold whatever flake or whatever this side. Then they put it in chemicals <coughs> to clean it off. They add some chemicals so that they can put it through a furnace, through fire, through heat. Why? So that you now can, the gold and the impurities from elkaar af geskui word. Is to get the impurities out of the gold so that you've got 18 karat gold or 24 karat gold or whatever. Same with your life. There needs to be heat on you so you moet a bieke stress to get the impurities out of you. God says he's, we are the vine. He'll come and he'll prune. Now as you prune word, it is seer. So you've got to go through hurt. You've got to go through pain. You've got to go through situations. Because God wants you to trust him on the little and once we start trusting him on the little, he'll know, yes, like Job. Test him. You can test him. He's my son. I know. What we've got in our lives, what we've got going on in our lives, it's not even a tenth or a twentieth of what Job went through. Yet his faith was still on God. His trust was still on God. Even his wife came to him and just said, you know what, just curse God. Because that was the enemy working through the wife. Just curse him. Just get it over and done with so you can die. You're going through this day in, day out, day in, day out. You, there's no, no outcome for you. There's no positive outcome for you. But Job saw in the spirit that there is going to be breakthrough for him. Why? Because he didn't stop with his faith. He didn't stop with his uh, 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 trusting in God. It got so bad that he actually cursed himself. He said, God, why was I ever born?
Why? But he was steadfast. And if you carry on with the story of Job, you'll see he was everything he lost, God gave it back to him double. Now, if, you, if, you have re- if, if, if you've read the, the, the story of Job, now you're going to look at me and say, but the math doesn't add up. All his possessions he lost got back double. So the enemy stole 10 camels, he got back 20 camels. But now what about his children? The enemy took 10 of his children... How much was it? Yeah, ten children. It was ten children. Yeah. Quickly check on your phones. Now the enemy, now God only gave him back the same amount. Family, think in God's way. The other children is in heaven. So he gave him ten new children. So he got back double his children. Whatever you go through, we've lost friends, we've lost, lost family, we've lost a wife, we've lost a grandmother, a mother. Life carries on. Put your trust in God. He will fill that empty spot if you allow Him. Yes, you will always remember that person. Like my mom and dad, I mean, they were there with me my whole life. My brother's going overseas next week, and I don't see him again. Joshua's going overseas next week. I don't know when we're going to see them again. Life is too short to keep grudges against family and friends. We're going to read from Matthew 12, verse 25. Jesus gives rest to the weary. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Same as Jesus said, We must become like little children. What does he mean by, in that verse when he said, we must become like little children? And yet, in this verse he says, everything is revealed to the little children. Why? Because children don't have hang-ups in their lives. Children don't have ultimatums in their lives. Children don't have... But if, if I do this, well, I don't know about the new generation, but the old generation definitely not. If I do this, what do I get out? That is what you and I say every day. We're little children of three, four, five. They just do. Yeah, they get to a stage where you've got to help them along with a a little slap or two but if mom and dad do that they just go and they do it because why they've got full trust in their mom and dad and that's what God wants from you and me to trust him without limits now this is where the supernatural comes in if you can trust God without limits The supernatural can take place in your life. Now what is the supernatural? The supernatural is God can bless you with a mansion. If it's His will, that's my prayer every day. Whatever is your will. So if it's His will for you to have a mansion, He will give it to you. So this is now... When, 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 when you start trusting Him without limits, see this, see this in your mind, the Creator of heaven and earth, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit that created everything by word. What limits is there? So if you're standing in faith for a vehicle so that you can get to church on a Sunday, do you think there's limits on that? Do you think God can't give that to you? If He knows that car is going to bring you closer to Him, I'm going to give it to you like this. But if He knows you're going to use that car to go to masquerades or Presley's or whatever and get boozed up and use the back seat as a double bed, if you know what I'm trying to say, do you think He's going to give you that car? What's in here? Let's carry on because this... This is such a beautiful chapter. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. So God is pleased to share secrets with the children. We must become like a children, so he's going to be pleased to share with you. But listen now to this. Listen now. Listen, listen. And I'll read it twice. All things have been committed to me. That's now Jesus speaking. By my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And listen now. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. So choose God, seek God, have a relationship with God, and he will choose to reveal to you. Because now he knows he can trust you. Now he knows you're the person, when he gives you a, a truth, you will give it to other people. The Great Commission. Go out in the world and make disciples of all men. Give them the truth because the truth will set them free. Now the last part. Now this Bible, this is the Rainbow Bible. Okay, so I'm reading this piece. You'll see it's orange, purple and green. So orange is faith. Purple is God. The green is love. So this is now where the love comes in. This is an invitation he gives each and every person sitting here or out there. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. So he's saying, each and every person sitting here, I'm talking to you, Monique. I'm talking to you. This is now God saying, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Your problem you've got with whatever, bring it to me. Your problem with the school, bring it to me. Your problem with Sauti wat uithaak, bring it to me. Your problem with your boss, bring it to me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, so that I can get a smile on each person's face here, but but God is saying, whatever the situation, bring it to me, lay it down by my feet. Put your focus on me, like Peter did, and I will walk with you on the water. If your focus is on me, together we will perform miracles. Now everyone's going to see blasphemy, blasphemy. Go read the word. I will send you the Holy Spirit and with him you will do greater things that I have done. A scripture is in the Bible. So with the Holy Spirit you will walk on water like Jesus and Peter did. And that's what God wants for us. 
Things are happening around us. If we don't teach our bodies and our mind and our spirit to submit to God and to trust on God, we're going to have a very difficult time in the next two or three years. You can already see how the food prices are increasing. Petrol prices increasing. Electricity increasing. Wars and rumors of wars, it's there. Sicknesses and diseases, it's there. Hunger, it's there. People operating in the background to be the sole rulers of planet Earth, it's there. And if we can't see it, Please come to the front after the service so we can pray for you. We are living in the end times. If we can't trust God now, how are we going to trust Him next year or the year after when the boo-boo is really hitting the fan? How will we trust in Him if we can't even trust Him with a little today? Draw closer to God on a daily basis. Spend time with God. And I'm saying it and I'll say it every Sunday. Spend time with God on your knees and in your Bible study. Why? Because we saw. If we draw closer to Him, He will start revealing to us. That is called the spirit of discernment. So you will be forewarned by the Holy Spirit. Don't get in your car today. Don't drive that route today. Or don't get on this airplane today. You listen to God's word. You go home. Now you see on the news. Yo, that airplane was hijacked by terrorists. For example. Oh, there was a big pile up at the Kuli interchange. You do your mask. Guess what? I would have been there. I would have been in that accident. God will tell us, don't make debt. Why? If you can't handle your budget now, if you can't get out with your salary now, and you go buy a car, do you really think, on the same salary, you're still going to survive after two years. With the interest rates going up, with food going up, with petrol going up, with electricity going up. And your salary increase is definitely not the same as your life increases. You get a 2% increase, but medical aid goes up 10%, so you're already on the back foot. Now you earn 20 grand, but after your little increase, now you've got an increase on your medical aid, now you're taking home 19. Mark it sin. My math's making sense. Now food goes up by 8%, so your grocery bill was 2 grand, so you would have taken home 18 grand, now the food is 13 grand. Now with your medical aid and with your food, now you're taking home 17 or 16 instead of 18. So now you already had a loss of 2 grand. Listen when God speaks. He speaks for a reason. And when you come before God and you say, God, you know what, there is my worries. But now you turn around and you go buy a car. You come before God, God, just my finances, I don't know what to do. There, it's before you. Oh, I'd like you to hide it. It's so nice and I'm not equipped. Now you buy a car, now God says, but I thought you were going to trust in me. Now you get yourself into trouble. But you expect me to get you out of the trouble. Guess what? God will be with you, but you're going to pay for that car for the next five years and it's going to be bloody tight. 
not God that put you in that situation, it's you yourself. Trust God with everything. Take my yoke upon you and learn. <laughs> Listen to this. This is Jesus speaking. And learn from me. So, for the people that might be watching, if God's word offends you, the problem is not with the word. The problem is not with the pastor. The problem is not with that church. The problem is with you. Because God says, learn from me. And if you don't have a learning spirit, if you're not willing to listen to what the pastor or the elder or someone else, if they speak to you and they speak to you from the word, and you don't want to take that advice, guess what? The problem is with you. And a saying I love to say is, build a bridge and get over it. God doesn't teach to offend. God teaches you or speaks to you so that you can learn, that you can inherit eternity. So om hier op planet aarde, planeet aarde, bieke seer te hee, is die moeite werd om een dag vir eeuwigheid saam met God, Jesus Christus en die Heilige Geest te kan wees. What a small offering. Now that is the same as your tithe and offering. That small eina. And he says, I will open up the windows above you. Everything God does, there is a reason that he does it. But unfortunately, we've got to walk the walk. Like Jesus did. When Jesus was on the cross, if he at that time, if he just said, God, you know what, I cannot take this anymore. Just send the legions of angels to sort. You know what, the whole planet earth would have been destroyed. You think that those angels would have stopped slaughtering the people that is busy sacrificing their creator. You think, if you go read, um, I'll do this study, we'll, we'll do a message on it, I'll tell you exactly how many people one angel can kill. Now we're talking about legions. No, this whole planet Earth would have been wiped out if Jesus just said, do it. What did he say? It's not your will, Father. I will take it. I will take it. If Jesus decided, because remember, he also, he was a God, he came to earth as a man, but he also performed in the supernatural. Go look at all the miracles he performed. If he said, you will not catch me, you will not hang me on that cross, you think the people would have caught him and would have been able to hang him on the cross? No, he did it because of choice. Because that you sitting there, me standing here, everyone watching there on, on, on Facebook, have the opportunity to be with him. Three or four or five weeks ago we did the message where he said, I'm going to my father's house. I'm I, Jesus Christ, the, the, the one that was there with creation. I am being the servant and I'm preparing a room for you. All you've got to do is say, yes, here I am. Yes, forgive my sins. Yes, change my life. Yes, I accept that each and everything is only through Jesus Christ and no one else but Jesus Christ. We cannot pray through Mother Maria or pray through the Father at some church or 
pray through St. Peter or whoever. The word says, no one comes to the Father but by my name. And that name is Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who died on a cross, went to hell, ascended after three days, and then ascended to heaven uh, 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 um, after that, sitting at the right hand of his Father. No one on earth, don't be confused, no one on earth can forgive you your sin except Jesus Christ because He paid the ultimate price that we aren't worthy to pay. No one sitting here is worthy to do what Jesus Christ did. So how can people sit here or stand in a building and say, I'm the Father. You can sit in a cubicle Come confess your sins to, to, to me and I will forgive them because I'm the, the, the representative of heaven here on earth. What rubbish. I'm not a representative. I'm just a vessel for God to work through. It's all about Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. It's not about Duncan Wilson. It's not about Monique Wilson. And it's not about anyone sitting here. It's all about Jesus Christ. And us sitting here to open our hearts that God can work through us so that the word can get out and we can minister to the, to the nations. Because God is saying, put the plows in the fields. Krij die koring in. Want die seisoen is bezig om te draai. Time is running out. My dream book is in the house now. I, I shared this dream a few months ago with the people where I dreamed of we've got a big property with a big house with the cornfields and we were outside and we were, we were harvesting and our neighbors, uh, see there I'm actually getting goosebumps, but I could see our, our, our neighbors, they were harvesting, but they were harvesting with haste. They were, if you, if you go and you watch the cartoons where that tractor, it will be halfway in the ground and that one big tie and it's spinning and it's just like with a speed. That's how I saw those people and I shared that dream with someone and, 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 and he said, you in the church, you, 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 you're doing your harvest, but the, the, the neighbors that you saw represents the angels and how hastily they are moving because they really know time is running out. Look, no one is going to know exactly when God, uh, 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 when Jesus is going to come back. Only the Father knows. But he says in his word, you will at least know the season because the word says, I'm going to give you signs and wonders in the sky that you can go out and put oil in your lamp and go stand in the queue like the ten virgins did, but five, only five had oil, five were we're in a daze. I don't know what was going on in there. It's 10 to 1 watching Seven Alarm. I don't know. But be ready. Be in that queue. Be dressed for the supper. Be clean. Because please, make sure you shower. Because I don't want to sit next to you for a thousand years having a, a party and you smell like a rotten tomato. Make sure we're ready. But most importantly, this message, come before God. Whatever your situation and your problem is, trust on Him. Bring it before Him. Your prayers, come before Him. Stay in your confessions. Lord, this is what I prayed for. Keep confessing. Do your confession wall with what you're standing in faith for with your scriptures to back it. Start training yourselves to become the person that God wants you to be. Amen. Let's close and pray. Father God, we just thank you that we could share your word, that we could be as friends and family in Christ, Father God, that we know and we know and we know that you died for us. We know 
if we accept you as our Lord and Savior, the promise for us is eternity with you, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Lord God, and I just hope that the eyes are open, that each and every person sitting here can realize that they can come to you. You want us to come to you with our problems. You want us to put our faith in you. You want us to trust you. Holy Spirit, I just ask this morning that, the, that you will break down this pr pr protective barrier that we've got in, in our lives, that we're not willing to trust God, to break that down, to take the hardness out of our hearts, to soften us, that we can trust on you and can rely on you. We pray it. We believe it and we receive it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen.